Hey everyone, thanks for checking out A Drink With Crazy and welcome back to part two of our Critics, Mary Sue's, and Toxic fan base discussion. Today we're going to be kind of daisy chaining off of what we did in the last one, talking daisy about the writing you musician, you. of... You musician, you. <laughs> talking about the writing uh, uh, differences and what people look for. Talking about the Mary Sue's and Gary Stews that are in media and why bad characters and what's happening is just so utterly disappointing in some of our favorite franchises so without any further ado go down there subscribe ring that notification bell and let's get into the discussion make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you ring that notification bell and make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive youtube algorithm all right, so Mary Sue, a word that has been hugely popular in oh, you're, you, you see, it, you see it everywhere. You see it everywhere. This is a Mary Sue. That's a Mary Sue. Your mom's a Mary Sue. I, I just <laughs> there are, now there are a lot of things out there that I, I I disagree with. I think that they're one of the one of uh, one of the things that I think people need to understand when we're talking about a Mary Sue and what a Mary Sue actually is, and most of the critics have no idea, is. <laughs> The, the, the grading system don't. as to what we have to grade the Mary Sue on. And that is the suspension of disbelief of whatever media that we're watching, right? Right, so right. So if the media is asking us to have, you know, like a plus six disbelief to get into this movie or game, and they establish it that well, well, if the Mary Sue all of a sudden comes out or, you know, at a plus 25, like, okay, well, let's... We're yeah. obviously yeah, they're absolutely. just so over the top done for whatever media they're trying to do, and it just breaks the medium. It does, and so that's kind of where I'm going to uh, start this whole thing off. Is where people try to say that this character is a Mary Sue or that character is a Mary Sue, and again, it's all based on the suspension of disbelief that we're supposed to have when it comes to the certain medias. For instance, one of the things that I hate. I do not like when people call Cora from The Legend of Cora a Mary Sue. No, she's not. She is not a Mary Sue based off of, and we actually have the tropes pulled up on our phones right now. Uh, yeah. She's yeah. not a Mary Sue based off of the suspension of disbelief and based off of the execution well, of the show. I'm, I'm a, a Mary that, Sue is essentially a character that is so perfect at so many things that it just shatters that suspension of disbelief. It is improbable. It is not possible. And then it also removes any ability for character development, right? So, you know, if you start out at a perfect 10 or like a 9.8, there's nowhere for the character to move anymore. Yeah. Uh, they can go down. You could always do that. The paragon that falls, but they don't do that. No. And which, so that's part of what makes a Mary Sue a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu. Yeah. Is um, which and, and, th this level of perfection and to the point where it even engenders awe in the otherwise protagonist, right? So uh, the original Mary Sue came from a uh, parody of... Star Trek fan fiction, mm -hmm. where Mary Sue was just so perfect, so charming, so intelligent that she graduated the Academy at like 15, was assigned to the Enterprise and impressed Picard so much that she, be, or Kirk, I think it was Kirk at the time, that um, she was able to, you know, helm the Enterprise and, you know, be the captain. And mm -hmm. the, she was just so awesome that they even made her you know, birthday Kirk's a national advances honor. wouldn't work on her because she was just so moral. Uh, uh, Spock and, was she could outsart Spock and come up with better plans and ideas. And, and she and was so perfect that her birthday became a holiday on the Enterprise. Yeah, like I mean, it, and that was a parody of that kind of self-insertion, wish fulfillment fan fiction. So nowadays, when we talk about the trope of a Mary Sue, it is a character that is so perfect that they have no. Uh, they're already perfect at everything they try to do. Mm -hmm. That they are so liked that the otherwise protagonists aren't all of them. The, the and, villains even like them. The uh, yes, the the regular people love them. The other B character side characters love Through them. No advancement. They of their they really have no obstructions, yeah. no character flaws, and nothing that holds them back from doing really anything that they want to do. And the plot or the universe that they're in just seems to just bend around them. Kind of like, you know, a black hole bends light around Oh, it. indeed. And um, I know it's overused at this point, but one of the most uh, famous versions of a Mary Sue these days is Rey. Is Rey from Star Wars. Yeah, the, the Disney And then And series, people yes. say, well, well, you might, well, Rey's not a Mary Sue. How can you say that Rey is a Mary Sue? Well, looking at this with the pre-established uh, things that we know exist, it took very highly trained Jedi Knights to do a mind trick. Right? So let's just go with a real easy litmus test for Mary Sue versus not Mary Sue. How many failures does a character have to endure? How many failures did Ray have? None that I know of. 
None the, that were not, uh, they they tried to say that there was one or two in um uh the no, just, just I can't actually think. They, there you go. They they tried to say that there were a few, but we're, they immediately the, wrote it back. Like it was it was Yeah, you're talking about the lightning yeah, scene. It was, where, I'm gonna use yeah. a word here. It was happenstantial. And it wasn't really her fault. What, it was, where was she um idolized by the people around her? Essentially, yeah. Everybody loved her. Everybody thought she was great. Nobody disagreed with her. Did uh, the original uh, protagonists and characters find themselves in awe of her, or at least in great respect through very little of her effort? Yes. Ergo. Yeah, ergo she's a Mary Sue. Because she did, she, her, her character in and of itself did not have to work for anything. Let's talk about the Gary stew that you pointed out to me well, earlier Well, I was going to say, just continue with the litmus test just to kind of hammer this point home real quick. What, is uh, let's use that same litmus test on Luke Skywalker, right? From the uh, the OG, yes. right? All right, how many uh, how many failures did Luke Skywalker have? Uh, well, he lost his hand for one. Yep, that's the big one. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, that's the big one. He was brash and always looking for something that was going to get himself into trouble. His you know kind of running off and. Uh, making decisions. Yeah, he's very idealistic, and he's so idealistic he's a, that it actually endangers yeah. any sort of. Absolutely, he had, he he did struggle with learning the Force, and it took immense amounts of focus for him to become the Jedi Knight that he he turned into in uh you know Jedi, uh, right? Return of the Jedi, and um, but, so here's my fundamental question: is if uh if Anakin had not stepped in, would uh, Luke have lost to the Emperor? Oh, he totally would have. No, no, Luke would have died. Yeah. Period, end of story. It wasn't, that's the one thing. It, it wasn't Luke that killed the Emperor. It was Vader. Were the established uh, characters, meaning Obi-Wan, uh, Palpatine, Vader, Leia, Han, were they in awe of Luke from the start? Uh, no. Obi-Wan was his, he watched Luke from far off and was kind of his, like, invisible caretaker. Guardian but angel, so to speak. Guardian angel, so yeah. to speak. But he wasn't in awe. He was protective Leia thought he was just kind of this weird runt. Aren't you a little short for a yeah, stormtrooper? Yeah, and yeah. had little experience. Han just kind of didn't respect the kid off the bat. Like, dude, you're stupid. What are you doing? Stop it. Like, you, I know what I'm doing. Shut up. Sit down, kid. This is your first time in the rodeo. This great ain't kid, my first Don't time. get cocky. Yeah, yeah. Great kid. Don't get cocky. And... And and there 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 was a lot there. There was trust that had to be earned. There was they were still uh, uh, there. You know, Yoda very much thought he was uh, uh, Anakin like. Yoda didn't want to train him. Yoda thought that he was making a big mistake. So, Yoda was highly disappointed. So disappointed that when he speaks with Force Ghost Obi Wan, that they say if he fails, there is another. Yes, there is another. And that's the thing is that and there so was I just, but, the two protagonists of two different um, you know series of movies in the same franchise, right? Yeah. And so you can, as you, he rambled on here, you can see how many trials, adversities, character flaws Luke has to overcome mm -hmm. within that narrative, and they don't apply to Ray. So ergo. So Gary Stews are also, they are less common, and we'll get to why here in just a second, or at least what I think is why. Yeah. But um, a good example would be uh, Owen Grady from uh, the new Jurassic Park films. Yeah. The only one that can tame the Velociraptors mm -hmm. to the point where they turn on any other human that isn't him. Mm -hmm. You know, so charming, so good looking. He gets the girl, you know, is able to save, outrun every dinosaur, you know. Yeah. And well, and, and again, again, that, you know, the Velociraptors, which are the boogeyman of the franchise. They bend to his will, so you start to see the the kind of the accretion well, disc well, around his characterization. And, and, didn't, and didn't he? Uh, didn't he also get the what was it? The Indominus or whatever, or what was the other one that was mixed with Raptor DNA? Yeah, that the just Indominus Rex. Yeah, that just yeah. eventually could kind of like listen to him too. Or no, something. no, 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 no. But he did manage to sick ra the Raptors on it. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Because he took back control from, from the Indominus yeah, Rex. Yeah. That's what it was. That's yeah, what it was. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm not familiar with a lot of the Jurassic Park stuff, but yeah. That's I, as, as I say, he was so damn good looking, even the Raptors panties dropped. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just one of those things that when you really look at character writing and you want to tell a compelling character, giving them flaws, and that's ultimately what the Mary Sue is, is just a character that is just without flaw, so much so without flaw to the point that they don't even meet resistance from their fellow uh, characters. And no, you'll even see the villain kind of bend over backwards, and this is where... I get very, you know, annoyed with things like, um, I, I hate to keep bringing it up, I'm going to bring it up again, The Last of Us 2, is that Abby gets everything. Mm -hmm. She gets everything. Yeah. And, and you can say that, obviously, she had, 
struggle and turmoil. And that, that's the important thing to keep in mind is that, you know, they can still face adversity. That is one of the litmus tests for, you know, finding a Mary Sue is how much adversity do they face. Yeah. Abby actually faces a fair amount, but... She st- it all works out for her. Even her adversity ends up getting her towards her goal. Well, and that's one of the things is that in order to be considered a Mary Sue or Gary Stu, as they're known, is you don't have to – you really, really don't have to hit all of the bullet points, right? No. Because it, it, over the course kind of, of time, we percentage. know what good character looks like. And – and sometimes you might only just have one of those bullet points, but it's just so it's just so overly done. Again, you know, if in The Last of Us Two, okay, post apocalyptic world, so we'll talk, let's just throw this out there. So we're at like a plus ten there, right? Right, we're definitely at a plus ten. I, I'm already buying that the world's destroyed, the cities are being overgrown, and that there are mushroom zombies running around everywhere. Yeah. So my suspension of disbelief is already yeah. pretty high. Yeah. So I'm already there, but then. When, but you still ask us, and the only reason it wouldn't be higher than a ten is because you start going north of a ten, you start saying, "Well, this is just a different world." To your your space odysseys, your your things, or of even that. Harry Potter, you accept yeah. magic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that so, but they're asking you to believe that this is just our world, just twenty years later. And there were so many things in The Last of Us too, uh, and especially specifically with you know with Abby or with just other characters, but Abby specifically, that you get to this place and you're like, any normal person would have died here. Yes. Okay. Any normal person would essentially be hated by everyone around them for this. But you heard it most of the way. I think the only character that didn't like Abby was Mel, and that's just because you know. But spoiler alert! Spoiler alerts! Spoiler alerts! And that's because you know she's she's uh, pregnant I, 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 and she's pregnant, and the guy that she's you know having the baby with cheated on her with Abby. Like uh, right, so, right. But that's the only thing that Abby really has against her. Otherwise, everybody likes her. Everybody loves her. You know, they don't. You know, there one, one might. Alley. Say that but, one yeah. might say that her faction hates the faction that Abby was trying to protect more but, than they she, like Abby, but they still, again, you still end up in this place where our suspension is a plus ten, and Abby comes in, comes rolling in at like a plus fifteen. And I, so I, 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 I hate to say, even her very physique starts to question, like, why is she able to be so, you know, ripped in this world? Like, I mean, you look at real world bodybuilders and the the calories they have to eat the and the calories, protein. The calories, the workouts. Like, is she getting plus everything. four rations for everybody else's plus one? Like, and you know, here's the thing: is that you could, you could actually play with that and say. Well, yeah, she does because she's their, like, elite operative, right? Yeah. And there's actually a little bit of resentment towards her, but you got to build that in. See, and, well, and they, and they didn't do it, and there are reasons, I think, that they, uh, they went with that, but, but ultimately— And that kind of ties into what I'm, you know, kind of thinking is, again, it's execution versus intent, right? Yeah, the intent, and that goes into our last conversation that we had is the intention of a lot of these Mary Sues and Gary Stews is all the writers want to see or all the critics want to see and the fans want to see good character, good execution. As uh, somebody they can relate to. A lot of it, so much of it is relatability, right? When, mm-hmm. you, uh, when you see a character, you go, I understand them. I understand where they're coming from and I could actually see myself behaving in a similar way pushed to these extremes. Yes. But when you get a character that is so unrelatable, so perfect, things just kind of f- happen to them that just work out, you start to go, No. And I'm sorry, I think a lot of the reason we see a lot more Mary Sue's than Gary Sue's right now is that there is a very big push to have strong women in our stories, Mm -hmm. but they don't take the time to develop them. No. They want them at the ideal before you even get started, so that leaves them nowhere to go. Yes. And a good example of this would be Hermione from uh, the Harry Potter movies. Mm -hmm. They wanted her to be so much in the spotlight, they took away a lot of her development, gave her lines from other characters, gave her knowledge that she probably shouldn't have had. Yeah. Because they wanted her to be so likable and idealistic and just this kind of almost a paragon role Mm -hmm. that robbed her of her character development and got her dangerously close to that mary sue area if if well and that's the thing is if if she was and that's movie that's movie that's the movies that's the movies only the the books obviously were very different but that's where we're at is that if harmione was not a mary sue and i don't think she quite got there because there were still people that did not like primarily because hermione is still a supporting character she's still a supporting character but i don't so i don't think she hit but she was definitely ex machina oh yeah it was harmione ex machina like that's that's what they did and that's the problem is that again no no two Mary Sue's are the same because depending no. on what different I'm writers, watching, different different objectives, different depending worlds. On, exactly, depending yeah. on what I'm watching, and I go, okay, I have to spend my disbelief this much. Okay, no, oh, this, oh, I really, oh, gotta I have my, to, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm this high and now. And so you okay. come into like Star Wars, Star There's already space wizards, spaceships, you know, like, 
laser planet beam destroying swords. things. Like, yeah. we, we know where the bar is, and it's a really high bar. And when you have, and when we're already in a suspension of disbelief for all of this other things, and we go, wow, and then somebody comes in and just the universe just bends around them, and you're like, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah. And, you're, and it just breaks that disbelief because, again, there's no relatability because even in that world, you still have to have some kind of relatability. And yes. It's, well, for instance, it's part of the reason, like, The Walking Dead started bothering me. Oh, yeah. It was just the relatability factor. You just started seeing all the ex machinas and... and Contrivances you know, and all this. And, and, you know, that doesn't... That, that That's just a little side note I'd like to throw into this conversation. Right, yeah, no, Because it doesn't absolutely. really have the Mary Susan Gary Stews. You know, um, obviously, you have people, uh, uh, and everybody just wants to throw the term out loosely, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue. Like, for instance, everybody wants to say that Captain Marvel was a Mary Sue. I disagree. I, I do just too. think that I she, it was, because I'm already in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Right. And, and so, so, we started out with a guy escaping from a cave and making a suit to fly around and, and blow up his weapons. Due to his and resources now we're and his at intellect, yes. universal scale crap happening we've already had thanos we have the infinity stones like we already have this yeah, well, kind of well, level by of the time captain marvel would come out we'd seen infinity war right so yeah there you go so there you go so we've already had this universal scale type stuff so for her to come in and captain marvel even in the comic books is actually rather powerful right and for her to come in and they're like hey like she's the strongest uh, character out there and this that and the other thing it's not that she was a mary sue because she didn't really have enough of it what it was is that she was just a poorly written character uh, i and got the, 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 the reason that people didn't like her they didn't like her for just for dumb reasons and it's also it's a lot of its execution you know her dialogue wasn't written the best well maybe. yeah she was a, and she, nothing yeah. against brie larson because you have to work with the script but maybe things that were supposed to be funny uh, weren't conveyed no, properly I've seen, I've seen some scenes of her and some other stuff and she's 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 kind of wooden she's not she's not bad i just don't know if the superhero role is right for her uh, fair enough and maybe maybe she's just you know yeah, the wrong just, choice for that kind of movie you see well that a lot. and I, you know there was a lot of controversy about but, Captain Marvel and all but, that too but, but but no what it seems to me with Captain Marvel is that they were trying very hard to make a paragon role and just missed it's not that she's a Mary Sue it's that they tried to make her a paragon and it just didn't happen yeah and and that's the problem here too is that a lot of people misunder misunderstand and misinterpret the times where they legit just write a Mary Sue or they're they're trying to write a Paragon and they just fumble it hard because, um, you know, like I said, a lot of people going back to this, I'll, I'll kind of close. I'll kind of make my, my last point. Well, one of my right, last points right. here, but is that, you know, Cora from The Legend of Cora. Everybody wants to say that Cora was a Mary Sue. She said, Mary Sue this, Mary Sue that. And I'm like, okay, they're not taking in well, they're not again, taking in her massive personality flaws that she had. They're not taking again, in that she actually that pushed people test. away. She she pushed people away. People hated her. People didn't like her. The spirits were mad at her when she combined the spirit world and the, the people were mad at her. The yes. people didn't even want her. And then on top of that, yeah, she was good at three forms of bending, but another form of bending she kind of sucked at. And then in addition to this, she ends up getting almost killed by these idealistic nut jobs and she almost dies and now she has personal fear that she has to get over she goes into a wheelchair she actually gets damaged and she then literally has to rediscover herself she has to start from ground zero build herself back up and really figure out how to not be that so that, 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 anymore. that, that defeats that that hits all the litmus tests of being against a mary sue right yeah. she faces adversity the but, original protagonists are not just in awe of her you know no zuko and katara i know show up i don't remember if Sokka does uh, um, um but um you know toph obviously not and none of these characters are just like bowing at her feet they just go yeah you're the avatar and we got your back but you got to prove yourself a bit because mm -hmm. we knew the other avatar yeah well and that was the thing too is that's one of the reasons that i really like people don't seem to people well she's she's just so overpowered ang didn't well no but even we also saw Aang at 12. Yeah, we saw Aang at 12, not this girl. But they did show her very young, and she was able to bend a lot. And they're like, no, but we also have to understand that with if you're going to throw reincarnation in there, some people are just going to grab stuff faster. Some people might just be naturally gifted avatars. I bet there was an avatar that probably took him 20, 30 years to master everything. We just don't see that story. And he's just like, boring. I just can't get this earthbending final. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. no absolutely. And so, no, just to kind of wrap up were, here. But, but that's the idea here is that noticing... The difference in the scale is that what does this medium ask you? How much disbelief does it ask you to have or your suspension of disbelief? How much are they saying, okay, guys, 
Roll with us here. And you go, okay. And then all of a sudden, the character is so OP for the story that they are just unbelievable in the story you're already suspending your disbelief for. Right. It's this uh, no different than Rey in Star Wars, Owen in Jurassic World, or um I, know, uh, one of the guys I always thought was kind of a Gary Stu was that God, I can't remember his name, but he was the he was the hybrid from uh um Oh, from Underworld, yeah. Yeah, the hybrid yeah, yeah. from the first three well, Underworld That's also movies. very much a Chosen I, One sort I, of thing. I, yeah, I hated that. Yeah, but Chosen Ones could be that. He was kind of a Gary Stu. He had enough of the stuff in there that I'm just like, mm. Yeah, I know. He's at least on the spectrum. He's at least, I did not yeah, like Yeah, he's him. on the scale there. It's, um... So now just to wrap up here, it's uh, so much of it is attempt versus execution again. That's why you see so many people defending these characters is that they are so desperate for this ideal that they are willing to overlook shoddy writing. Um, it, they want a strong character, but they're not willing to let a character achieve their strength. They just want them to be strong. Yeah. And that causes the plot to kind of collapse in around these characters and bend in ways that suspend that to break that suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no, and it's a very damaging thing, and I'm getting very, very tired of seeing it. And, uh, I'm getting hugely tired of seeing it. And I, I'm it. getting and then, tired of seeing a lot of these, you know, to tie back into part one, I'm getting tired of seeing the critics and whatnot defend it because it is it's lazy writing. It's really what it is. It just comes down to lazy writing. No, and it is lazy writing. And not only that, but then when you point out the fact that there are, you know, you did marry Sue something, well, you're just a toxic bit. And that, yes, and that'll lead into part three. That which, will lead us into part three, yes. which you will see on Sunday. So join us back here on A Drink With Crazy. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell. Please. And do us a favor. Comment down below with how you think you should grade a Mary Sue or Gary Stu. Comment down below. Let us know what you guys think. And hopefully you guys stick around to see our part three because the toxic fan myth is a big one that we have talked about for yeah, quite that a one, while. Yeah, that, that one might get a little spicy, so stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned, and we will see you next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.